So uh, what are the revenue prospects at this point? Uh, well, in the surveys that we've done, they look difficult. 79% uh, of people tell us that they've hardly ever or never clicked on an online ad uh, from a news organization. Um, we asked people uh, about paywalls. And first, we asked how many people uh, have a, a site that they would call a favorite website. Only 35% did. Then we asked that group, uh, the group we would think most likely to be loyal and pay, uh, whether they would pay for their favorite site. And only 15% said they would. If you add in the ones who already do pay, which is a very small number who go to the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg, that number goes up to 19%. But it's still not a very big number. And it's certainly well below, at this point, the 10% uh, that news, many news organizations estimate would pay. Now, I don't know that this means that uh, uh, it can't happen. Uh, it just means that right at the moment, people are not accustomed to pain, and they're going to be initially resistant to it. So what are the models, then, for news? Well, this is hardly a, uh, a, a definitive list, but one would be different kinds of display advertising than, than news organizations use now. If you talk to people at Google, they scoff at the kind of display advertising that is in news organizations on news sites because they say it's too crude. It's not targeted enough. You haven't done any of the, they're in their 10th gener, one Google uh, uh, executive told us, we're in our 10th generation of online ads. You're still on your first. Um, another is non-news revenue. Um, newspaper executives have told me, you know what? We're in the home delivery business, and we're making new revenue from delivering things to people's houses. Uh, if the, if the, uh, if the uh, uh, post office stops Saturday delivery, that's good for us. Um, paywalls is clearly another. Transaction fees. You create a retail mall on your website, and people buy things, and you, you, you are in the retail business. Um, knowledge, services, uh, premium websites, microsites within news organizations, uh, mixed audience products where uh, uh, you um, uh, are, are basically selling information about your audience. Um, uh, targeted ads are part of that. Uh, amortizing across platforms. Uh, there's a host of other things. Even if you believe, as some do, that the news business has missed uh, major opportunities, uh, scores of opportunities of, in the last decade, there are still, most people think, still a lot of opportunities there. Oops, I hit the wrong button. The key to all of this is going to be understanding the new news consumer. Uh, how do people get news? What is brand? What's the difference between two terms that are gaining influence now, commodity news and franchise news. Commodity news being news you can find in a lot of places. Franchise news being news you can only find at that one news organization. Um, first, uh, in the work we've done, we found that the notion of a primary news source is obsolete. People today graze across many news sources. Uh, even the way the surveys generally are asked, where do you get most of your news, may be an obsolete question now. Um, People graze across multiple platforms and sources throughout the day. They no longer rely on a single or even a handful of gatekeepers. Only 7% of people get news from one platform, say just TV. 46% get their news from four to six platforms every day. And 60% go online and offline in a typical day. Where do they get their news? Across a wide swath of things. 50% of people still get news every day from a local newspaper. Um, uh, local TV news, although it's suffering, is still the most popular. Online, those numbers for online, though, are clearly going up. But the idea that the old uh, uh, technologies vanish, of course, is probably not the case, at least not anywhere near yet. They also acquire news throughout the day. 30% uh, 30, 30 now get news online several times a day, just online. Uh, and how far do they range online? Not that far. They graze, but they graze to a handful of places. Only 3% of people online get news from more than 10 websites on a regular basis. Most people are in the two to five favorite sites, or not favorite sites, but trusted sites. Uh, and where do they gra graze online? It, interesting. 
60% uh, to aggregators. And, and certainly in the traffic data, the aggregators are the most popular. Um, but there's a wide range of places in there, including social media. 30% of people get news from people or institutions that are not news related that they follow in social media. And what, are they, what do people do online? A lot of things, um, including email stuff to each other. Uh, one big question, and I'm almost done, is whether people now are just going where they want to just the subjects and the things they're interested in, where we're sort of migrating to fragmented, specialized areas and, and places that they agree with. The answer appears to be, both in the data and uh, in traffic data and in survey data, that that's not what's happening. That the idea of accidentally coming across things that you didn't know you were interested in still lives. It's a smaller part of our media consumption, but 34% of people say that describes them best. And actually, the traffic data would suggest those numbers may be even higher. Um, but partisan, and partisan news is clearly not uh, where everybody wants to get their news. 31% uh, say they prefer uh, uh, news sources that share their point of view. And in the Pew Research Center data, the, uh, people of the press, those numbers have not changed in decades. They've just stuck at about two thirds of people say they prefer to get news from that have multiple points of view or that have no point of view. Um, and online, the top sites dominate. The old media values, the old media presentation uh, still has market uh, appeal. Uh, the 4,600 4, sites that Nielsen tracks uh, that have, um, uh, 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 that are, do news and information, uh, the top 7% get 80% of the traffic. Those are the sites with over 500,000, and those are dominated by old media. Uh, of the top 200 news and information, uh, two, uh, top 200 news sites, 67% are from legacy media. Another 13% are aggregators who aggregate old media. Only 14% are online-only content creators. So there's still a market for what these people produce uh, for that kind of repertorial journalism if there's a way uh, to monetize it. I said I'd finish by uh, 1.30. I think I'm a minute long. Thanks.